Over the last few months, I've hit a 4-iron to 123-yard par 3 hole in Scotland and launched a driver just over 330 yards at a golf course in South America. Both shots took me by surprise, as clearly the conditions I was playing in had a huge effect on the distance of the golf ball on each occasion. Golf is a hard enough game as it is without adding the variables outside your control into things, but they are obviously a fact of playing the game, especially in the off-season months, and given the importance of distance and its proven direct link to scoring, it is clearly vital that players understand how much external factors affect golf ball distance. So in this video, we look at the key factors of weather, wind, temperature, humidity, and course geography, including slopes and altitude, to understand what effects they have on the distance the golf ball travels, and by how much, and what you can do with your shots to combat or take advantage of them. I've been very lucky in my golfing life to play a lot of great golf courses and one of these this year was the Open Championship course at Royal Troon where the famous posted stamp par 3 8th hole measures only 123 yards long. But due to the 30 mile an hour wind blowing in the day I ended up having to hit a 4 iron to reach the green which given I normally hit that club around 165 to 170 yards came as a bit of a shock. Needless to say, I didn't hit the green, but it got me thinking about the precise impact of wind and golf ball distance and how much wind affects it. As a general rule, headwinds affect golf ball distance more than tailwinds. Hitting into a 30 mile an hour headwind reduces the carry, the distance of the average PGA Tour drive by 75 yards and a total distance of 91 yards. By comparison, a 30 mile an hour tailwind increases the carry distance of that same drive by 44 yards and a total of 84 yards. Given these numbers, wind clearly has a major effect on how far a golf ball travels, and this is due in short to lift, i.e. what makes the golf ball rise and drag, in other words, what slows the golf ball down. In simple terms, when there is a tailwind, the wind reduces the airflow pushing against the golf ball, while while you are faced with a headwind, the wind adds to the speed of the air pushing the ball back towards you. And the stronger the wind, the greater the amount of lift and drag. Lift and drag, incidentally, are also the reason why golf balls have dimples. Not only do dimples create turbulence in the air around the golf ball to make the low pressure zone, which causes drag to literally suck the ball like a vacuum back towards you, much smaller, but they also increase lift by increasing the pressure on the ball. The problem with wind, however, is that it, while it clearly has a tremendous effect on how far the golf ball flies, it is not predictable, to the point that anyone can predict its precise impact to the extent that they can say exactly how many yards you will lose or gain for every mile an hour of wind you are hitting into or playing with. A rule of thumb that a headwind hurts twice as much as a tailwind helps is often cited, but this is only true at higher wind speeds and is not a hard and fast rule. A 10 mile an hour headwind, for example, reduces the carry distance of the average PGA Tour player's 7 iron by 19.2 yards, while the same strength of tailwind will increase the carry distance of that same shot by 14.6 yards, which is clearly not a 2 to 1 ratio. The wind, by its very nature, is chaotic, and during the course of one shot can vary in strength significantly. This is what makes it so challenging to play in the wind and why it is impossible to be entirely exact as to the distances you will lose and gain playing into different strengths of headwinds and tailwinds. What can be said with clarity, however, is that lift and drag do not affect the golf ball in the same way, and that is why a headwind hurts more than a tailwind. Not only that, but wind crucially also plays havoc with the amount offline you will hit golf shots as well as the distance you hit the ball. In other words, wind greatly affects your shot dispersion. Ballnamic, a specialist golf ball fitter, have simulated that a 15 mile an hour wind that varies in strength and direction by plus or minus 3 miles an hour and plus or minus 15 degrees will increase the dispersion of a shot twice as much as a constant 15 mile an hour wind. Meanwhile, the estimate for a PGA Tour Pro 7 iron offline dispersion changes by approximately 10% for each 10 mile an hour change in wind speed. To combat the large effects of wind on a golf ball and to play effectively in it, it is therefore vital that golfers understand how the launch angle you hit the ball at and the spin rate you put onto it influence the outcome of their shots. And if your main goal is distance when playing in windy conditions, 
you need to focus on hitting lower spin drives into a headwind. That is because swinging harder typically generates more club head speed, which in turn creates more spin and therefore more lift and drag, and this allows the headwind to have a greater influence on the ball and make it go even shorter. The old adage of into the breeze, swing with ease is told for a reason. Instead, using a club with less loft is a better idea to reduce the spin rate when you're aiming to hit the ball as far as possible into a headwind. A down degree angle of attack rather than upward one created by hitting down in the ball also helps lower spin rates, as does the quality of the strike in the ball most importantly. Hitting the ball low in the face is bad, for example, and leads to more spin. By comparison, when playing with a tailwind, higher launching drives are what you're looking for to help the golf ball fly as far as possible. A tailwind produces shots that carry longer, fly lower and land flatter, and although you can use a higher lofted club to create more spin to increase flight time, the best bet is to launch the ball higher to maximise distance. The next key factor we need to consider which affects golf ball distance is air density. The greater the density of the air, the more resistance there is in the golf ball, which means more lift and drag and shots flying higher, landing more steeply and carrying shorter distances. And one of the three components which have impact air density is air pressure. And what affects air pressure, and therefore at golf ball distance, the most is altitude or elevation change. On average, male amateur golfers hit shots 6% further at an altitude of 5,000 feet, according to Trackman. By adjusting to launch the ball higher, PGA Tour pros can make the ball travel 9% further with their mid to short irons at the same altitude and at courses 8,000 feet above sea level can achieve 10 to 15% distance gains. So in short, altitude affects golf ball distance by impacting air pressure, and as elevation increases, air pressure decreases, resulting in less resistance or drag in the golf ball, which therefore flies farther at higher altitudes. The golf ball also, however, experiences less lift as well as drag at altitude, meaning golf shots which fly further but with a lower peak height. And it is for this reason you will often find PGA Tour pros teeing it high and letting it fly when hitting their drives at high altitudes to maximise launch angle and therefore carry distance. Golfers can also use different clubs to help increase the distance they hit the ball at higher altitudes. For example, hybrid golf clubs are designed to launch the ball higher than their iron counterparts and therefore simply by playing a hybrid rather than an iron, players can launch the ball higher, which has the double effect of making it carry a bit more and also making it easier to stop the ball on the green. Given that club head speed and the trajectory you launch the ball at also have an effect on the distances you gain when playing at altitude, there is no one exact, one size fits all way to know precisely how many yards each foot you play above sea level will increase your distance. However, Steve Ioma, a scientist in Titleist Research and Development Department has given it a shot and calculated that multiplying the altitude you're playing at in feet by 0.00116 will give a very decent estimate of the percentage distance gain you'll achieve. For example, if you play your golf in Denver at just over 5,000 feet and normally hit your drives around 220 yards at sea level, you will likely drive it about 233 yards in Colorado. And because the tour pros are well aware of the numbers and how hang time takes on greater importance at higher altitudes, they adjust their game accordingly to take advantage of the conditions to produce some dramatic distance gains. Just take a look, for example, at the typical average stock yardages Roy McIlroy hits the ball on the left, and then the notes taken of his yardages at the World Golf Championships at the Globe de Golf, Chapel Tepec in Mexico City on the right. Club de Golf at its highest point reaches 7,835 feet above sea level. To put that height in context, Muirfield Village in Ohio reaches 910 feet, while Augusta reaches near only 310 feet at its highest point. Playing at nearly 8,000 feet, we can see that McElroy is expecting in and around 30 yards, about 10.4% extra distance with his driver, and nearly a massive 17% distance gain with his 5 iron. And one final point to note when it comes to altitude and its effect on distance. While altitude has the biggest impact on air pressure and therefore the distance a golf ball travels, weather patterns also create small changes in air pressure. 
High pressure systems, for example, increase air density, while low pressure ones decrease density. However, any normal changes in air pressure caused by weather rather than altitude will likely result in less than one yard of difference in distance. Weather clearly affects golf ball distance and a key component of weather is obviously temperature. As we have already noted, the greater the air density, the more resistance there is in the golf ball, meaning it carries shorter distances. And as temperature has a direct impact on air density, how hot or cold the weather is, is going to affect how far a golf ball travels. As a whole, golf balls go farther in warm weather and every 10 degrees Fahrenheit rise in temperature above 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 4.4 degrees C increases distance by 1.33 to 1.5 yards depending on the club being used according to TrackMan. This is because hotter temperatures reduce air density which results in less resistance or drag in the golf ball. For anyone who has played a lot of golf over the years both in hot temperatures of summer and the much colder winter months, it is likely not news that you lose yardage in cold weather, but golfers, including many pros, often overestimate the effect of temperature and golf ball distance. Getting only an additional 9 yards when hitting your driver when playing in roughly 38 degrees C or 100 degrees Fahrenheit compared to playing in just over 4 degrees C, 40 degrees Fahrenheit is a lot less of a gain than many people expect, but it is also important to remember the impact of cold weather and distance does not solely relate to its effect on air, dis air density. The temperature you are playing in also affects the amount of clothes you wear and your muscle flexibility. So warm temperatures not only mean lower air density and therefore less drag in the golf ball, but also looser muscles and fewer clothing layers resulting in higher swing speeds and therefore distance. The elasticity of your golf ball in other words, its ability to get back into its normal shape after being smashed with a golf club can also change with temperature and make the distance increase seen at higher temperatures even larger. Saying all that, however, it is important to remember that temperature does not have nearly as big an effect on air dens density and therefore golf ball distance as altitude. And even in extreme hot weather cases, do not expect the added distance you gain to be ever any more than a club distance. The third and final main component of weather which impacts air density and therefore affects golf ball distance is humidity. As a whole, increased humidity means golf balls fly further, however their overall effect on distance is small. An extreme change in air humidity from 10% to 90% would add less than one yard to a mid-trajectory 6-iron according to TrackMan and just over one yard to a drive. While rain increases air humidity, creating thicker air which leads to more resistance to the golf ball in flight and therefore slightly shorter distances, that air density decreases and golf balls fly further in humid conditions, which can often feel quite oppressive and heavy to golfers playing in them, can sometimes take golfers by surprise. However, the reasons for this can be found in the science. In dry air with little humidity, the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen and oxygen, both of which are heavy gases. The water vapour found in humid conditions, however, is lighter due to the presence of hydrogen, which being the lightest gas makes human air, humid air lighter than dry air. And the more water vapour in the mixture as the humidity rises, the less dense the air and therefore the less resistance or drag in the golf ball. However, whatever the science, there's not a lot of need to understand it in detail that much when it comes to humidity's effect and golf ball distance as the impact, although positive, is small. Many regular players in human conditions often find it difficult to believe that humidity is not an important factor when it comes to distance and often cite numerous examples of their shots not going as far on hot and humid mornings. This however is likely to be due to moisture on the ball rather than moisture in the humid air. Balnamic, the specialist golf ball fitter, has found in his test that iron shots will fly up to 5 yards shorter and drivers up to 15 yards shorter when a ball is sprayed with water. So the next time you think you, that your ball is not going as far due to the humidity in the air, especially in the early morning, it's worth checking the water in your golf ball rather than blaming the water in the air. While weather and especially the wind is usually what preoccupies golfers the most when it comes to assessing how conditions will affect the distance they hit the ball, the location and features of the course also have a clear impact. We've already covered how the altitude impacts how much further a golf ball will travel, 
but how do the natural slopes and undulations of a golf course, especially a hilly one, also affect golf ball distance? Thankfully in today's game, when it comes to playing on hilly courses with big slopes and height changes between tees and greens, the slope function on modern laser rangefinders helps solve the problem and enables the modern golfer to take account of the elevation of the slope that is affecting their next shot. But while such information is undoubtedly helpful, it is important to remember that the adjusted yardage a laser rangefinder gives you still requires the golfer to exercise judgment when finally choosing the club to use. Ricky Fowler's caddy, Joe Scovron, gives a great example of this at Augusta, the exceptionally hilly venue each year for the Masters Golf Tournament. In an interview with USA Today Sports, Scovron explained how the 18th at Augusta requires players to hit approach shots up a 14-yard upslope. But, based on his experience, the caddy knows that the upslope only shortens Fowler's iron shots by between 5 to 8 yards, so be wary of simply blindly following the yardage given by the slope function on your rangefinder and use your judgment also based on any past experience you have on the course you're playing. And similarly to slope, it is of course also worth remembering the effect that the conditions of the course you're playing on have on golf ball distance. Waterlogged fairways compared to bone dry ones are obviously going to have a major impact on the total distance a golf ball travels. And this is also something to bear in mind when you watch the TV and see how far the top pros are hitting the ball. The pros are of course the best players in the world and their skill is the key factor in explaining how much farther they hit the ball than us regular amateurs. But the world-class course conditions that they play on every week also have an impact on distance to the extent that six-time PGA Tour winner Mark Leishman recently stated that part of his strategy for the upcoming season was simply to try and hit more fairways because he believed he could gain up to 30 yards of distance due to the great condition of the fairways in the PGA Tour. So, while the weather clearly has a huge effect in golf ball distance, don't forget in your final club calculation about how much of an impact course slopes and conditions also have. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it useful. And most importantly, enjoy your golf.